afternoon everyone. Um, I won't speak too much, I'll just take you through the photo story of my school. Um, I'm Sabahaji, I live in Doda, uh, a village in Doda and I will be taking you um, along. So let's, let's listen to the story of my school and then we can talk later if there's time. So this is my, these are my kids, this is my school in the village, we are Haji Public School and I'm from the Haji family which uh, goes back a long way in our area. Um, just to give you an idea of where we are, that's my school from my home. Uh, this is the topography of our entire belt. Uh, it's mountains, you won't find any plain, any plain level ground in the village at all except the ones we level for fields which is also not really level. Uh, this is the village as you walk through houses up and down. Uh, we are spread about 500 feet on the mountains. Um, that's the lower village as we're walking. So corn, wheat, these are our staples. Um, just to give you an idea, that star is where we are in, in Jammu and Kashmir. Um, so pretty, pretty much south. Um, to give you an idea of where, so that's Kashmir, which you all see in the movies, the valley, Gulmar, all the songs, the dull. But we are the purple stripes there, the mountains around. Um, basically that's Kashmir and we are around them. We are the mountains. That's us, yeah. Um, this again, just just pictures around my house. This is These are my grass fields where we do the harvest every October. Um, these, these are fields we've leveled out. These are, this is my family. This is what we do. And this is the last road stop. So from Jammu we go about uh, seven, eight hours, leave the car here and across the Chinab up there is where I live. Um, we don't have cars beyond this point, so this is what we do. That's me in the front like Gandalf, uh, taking them up. These are my volunteers, one from South Africa, one is from Bangalore. Um, three hours is a, is, a, is a good enough time or you can trek it, which goes up to five hours. Um, eight kilometers of, of this. Um, so I grew up in Dubai. Okay, that's uh, just some pictures to give you a background then um, every summer it was back to the village which is why we are so connected to uh, who we are. My dad was very interested in you know keeping that connect for us. Um, horse riding, mountains, picnic, living, living it up, keeping us very grounded basically. So we were all always really interested in getting back there. And then it was Bangalore for a, lo for a period. I grew up in Dubai and then it was Bangalore, never really lived back home. Uh, Bangalore is very serious, as you will see. This is what I did for a long time, 10 years of just partying, fun, working, which is kind of where you are all placed right now. College, fun, maybe work. And um, in 2008, this happened. I was at work. The Amarnath controversy broke out. There was rioting in some places, particularly my uh, mother's hometown. Um, it was a very, that was the, the point of my, in my life that I, that changed everything basically. I wanted to head back and be with the family. I realized the corporate life or sitting in an office and just enjoying was not it for me. And um, I decided that that day that I'll head back home. We had our, uh, this is Doda city, where we our family was running a trust uh, from 2005. And I moved back there. I thought I'll, I'll stay with the family and just help out with whatever they were doing there. Um, this is my uncle, Nasir Haji, who set up the trust initially. And once I moved back, he is doing very well for himself. He was in Singapore. He decided with the family that if we were there, would we, would we be willing to start a school in the village? Because education is the one thing that we all very firmly believe in, changes a lot for everyone. So my mom and I were very into it. My father was always a farmer at heart and he loved being in the village. And we said, yes, let's do it. And over the winter of 2008, we started planning for the school. We decided to start small, a private school. Um, start with kindergarten and then as, the, as those children grow, we would take the school up with them. We trained our teachers and we started, this is my cottage, we didn't have a school building then, this is my village home, that's my bedroom on the right, that's my parents bedroom on the left. So we started, these kids now you'll see them in the later pictures, they've grown up, some of them are in the seventh grade today. So two teachers, just some 30 odd students and every day it was like a, it was a it was a very novel thing for the villagers to see the children going to school and actually learning something with teachers sitting there throughout the day and, and teaching. So we have government schools everywhere across each and every village but no one's teaching. Children are not learning anything. So they would come and actually watch children learn ABC throughout the day or, or one, two, three. 
this is the first assembly. So even our house had not been built up to that point, but, the, but that's where we were doing the classes. Basically, all you need is a good teacher. You don't need a building. You just need good teaching and the, the, the willingness to teach kids. My two teachers, these are local boys that you know, we picked up who showed sincerity and who said that, yes, we will, we will give our time and, and work in the way that we wanted it. So we took in our private worth. I think my mom has worked for, uh, as a teacher all her life in Dubai and I worked in Bangalore. So we knew how to, you know, we were not in the, in the, in the frame of mind to tell ta hai, let's just do it, school, shiro gya, no problem. We had strict rules and these boys uh, were the ones who followed it. Um, over the next couple of years, this is what we've done. The entire school has been built by my village people. The bricks are built by them. The ladies and the, uh, and the men of the village have built this whole structure. They've carried the team from Premnagar up eight kilometers on their backs. Everything has been brought up by our donkeys or by, by, by my relatives, ourselves. And this is where we are today. It's gone up to 300 now. We've started the, the latest year. Um, so it's a, it's a fun school. You'll see some of our volunteers over there. Uh, the problem I have with my school is because of our location, it's staffing. We don't have teachers coming up. We don't have people trained in the areas because 20, 30 years of almost no education for the previous generation. We don't have anyone who can even teach maybe beyond first or second grade. So what hap that, that, was the, the, that is the still the biggest challenge that we have, getting staff, getting teachers who can do this. Um, but the kids are bright, the parents are so hungry for them to be educated and I have kids uh, as young as three years old, they walk up two hours to come to school every morning and then uh, an hour down and their parents bring them and, this, they, and they're regular, they never miss a day of school. Um, <clears throat> this is again just, just what stuff we've done in the classroom, we've got a, a wall climbing, artificial wall climbing thing here because A's and my, one of my first volunteers was a certified climber, diver. He got this in. Azen is now with us full time. He quit quit his job. He's he's deputy director of the school. And our kids, being mountain kids, are really good at this. And we hope to get into uh, competitions. I think the army school is the only one where kids are being sent in from. So we'll be we'll be coming <laughs> to the competition. So, um, these are our volunteers. Now I told you we don't have we don't have teachers. So what I do is I have planned volunteer programs. I need committed young people who really want to teach um, to give me three months minimum, come to the school, teach for a semester or so. Um, a lot of times, thankfully, because they like it there, they're pretty well taken care of, we give you your food and lodging, and it's very fun, and they can see what they're doing. A lot of times, three months have spilled over into a year. Um, some of my volunteers have come back for a second year. Um, we'll offer you a job if you want, we, you know, we'll pay you for your stay there. So this is, this is working out well for us. That's Azen on the left, and uh, engineers, doctors, writers, we have, this is, uh, Rahil Khurshid, who's now Twitter India on the right. That's Safia from South Africa. So you know, you bring your gadgets, you bring your experiences, your cultures, um, you're talking to the kids. And our kids are very bright, open-minded. One thing um, that, that they have that is very different from everyone else and very important is they're confident because they've, they're talking to people who give them respect and they've, they've lost all um, nervousness. They won't hide their face and run away when a stranger talks to them. They'll come up to you and speak. They're, they're really fun to be around and it's because the volunteers have come in over the years and you know taught them so much you know this is how they are normally they'll come into my ho house pick up my crazy hat and um, you know hang out with the different people so that it's, it's great fun once you're with them and the volunteers feel that connect uh, they feel connected to the village and they like staying on we've had volunteers from all over you know this is the, this so they share our festivals Eid. they've never seen this kind of a lifestyle it's a very rare thing for people to come and live in a village you know, see a Kashmiri Muslim lifestyle or see how, how we live up there and all your preconceptions go out the window, you know, so here we go. Um, this is just last fall and crazy fun, rehearsals, dance and you live, you live in your volunteer quarters so it's like a youth hostel, discuss movies, books, whatever. Uh, this is our local staff, it is sourced from the villages, 15 to 20 people at any given point of time not very well trained we do a lot of training with them but you know there's a lot of things they just cannot catch up on so the higher classes need our uh, our volunteers now the only reason i'm here today is because of the internet no one none of you would have known about the school or about us um, had it not been for that what i do is i need my phone i have a 2g internet connection very uh, very iffy but i've got onto tumblr facebook uh, you know we have our official website 
and Twitter. Twitter has been great. Um, I need to keep on almost spamming the world about things we're doing. The kids are attractive, they're funny, they have hilarious stories. So that helps in a way. But you know, updates like this have, have given us a little bit of visibility, um, which is the only reason any of uh, any of the even the curator had probably heard of me. So we have uh, the school in the village Tumblr. This is the village Tumblr, which shows village life and, uh, and, and a little captioning. So you know what's going on with us. We have, because of Twitter, we have celebrities at the kids. So the kids, you know, Coke Studio, Misha Shafi, Jugni, um, they love that. They practice that. And we send a video to her. And she, was, she wrote back to the kids who have now framed it and kept it in their classroom. So she knows about a lot of, a lot of celebrities know about the school, which is very exciting for us because the kids don't know them. But for us as a management, it's nice. Um, this is our Facebook page and then the volunteers when they're there, they blog about it. Um, so, so all of this is very important and, and the only way I can do this is through internet, which is the one thing that we don't have there. I have some basic connectivity on my phone. I will need to uh, work on getting broadband or 3G up there, which would also help classes perhaps, you know. Lord of the Rings. Our children are huge Tolkien fans. We did a very mega production of uh, Lord of the Rings. There's Smeagol in the front. And uh, so all of them, it, it took them like five minutes. Uh, they were excited to do the Lord of the Rings play when, they, when I told them that would be the play. I did the casting and in, within 15 minutes, they had gone and fashioned their own weapons, that bow and arrow, the sword, the belt, everything. And Smeagol went topless on his own. So that was very nice. <laughs> and we have this outside class four, you know, one does not simply walk into Mordor. Um, so what happened then was uh, a lot of foreign uh, media picked up some of the videos that were coming up. We were on Je Jezebel, uh, MSN, CBS, you know, NBC, and then uh, local things. And uh, this is actually the video that you'll see from our annual day rehearsal. So that's uh, kind of what we do, mostly for our entertainment rather than theirs. Uh, we have uh, our village, our community is made up of, so we have the local Paharis, we have the Gujars, Bakarwals don't stay long enough for the school. Uh, the Gujar community is very interesting because their studies was the last thing on their list of priorities. Uh, the top three priorities are their animals, their animals, their animals, then their families, <laughs> and then the rest. Uh, we have a lot of Gujar families now sending their kids in. They are extremely sharp, extremely, extremely bright with a lot of things. And uh, the girl in the top right, she was uh, a Gujar girl who has whose family, they live in a tent and they've never seen the inside of a school. And she's one of the most exciting students I've ever worked with. Um, let's see how she grows up. Um, why we do it? So I do it for the children. They are all my family. This is my village. The idea setting uh, for us, the dream into reality bit has been, the dream was we give education and then see what happens with that. So that is working out for us in a way where these kids are, uh, I have compared them with city kids in big schools and I find them much better in a lot of aspects. Um, we have given them a foot in the door essentially, which is all they need. You give them the opportunity because just because they're a village uh, and you know a school can't reach them, there's no reason for them not to be able to reach whatever they want to. Give them the foot in the door. Um, and they are doing very well and we are really hoping that, you know, studies wise academics pushes them into whatever they want to do. This is, these are all, these, this is all of them. This is why we do it. 
um, different schools, three villages are covered so far. Once we have the, the Kacha roads joining villages, we might set up a bus to you know collect kids from different villages, pull them all in together. And this is the story of our school. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's the story of my school. The dreams into reality bit from our end was give them education and see what happens with the kids. For the parents, it's, um, you know, these are my kids, what can I do for them? And they've really gone all out in helping us, supporting us from building the school to supporting us in every way. And my dream now, speaking to young students here, or, or, or if you speak to others, I don't know how many of you are from villages. Um, any, any connections to villages here? Any of you based out of villages or if your families? Few, a few, okay. Because most of the people are us, we are, we are the villagers. So um, you have the privilege of you know, a very good education. Um, do, do well for yourselves, use that studies to get on in life. But also remember, huge swathes of population don't have that. And if you can, whatever you can do, support us, support villages like this, start initiatives like this, help people who want to do it if you can't do it. That's because time is the biggest thing you can give. You don't have that, but let's see what you can do with it. You are the youngsters, you have to look at this. I am not looking at the government for this. We'll have to do something ourselves. So that's the story. Let's, uh, let's do something. <laughs>